Hello and welcome back to Cinema Burger, where I bring you movie reviews from a different perspective. We continue our 2020 movie catch-up with the Russell Crowe thriller movie Unhinged. Russell Crowe plays a disgruntled man who seems to take his anger out on a woman who honked at him in an intersection. So the opening scene is Russell Crowe sitting outside a house and we hear yelling in, inside. And all of a sudden he walks in, kills the people inside, and sets the house on fire. And that's just the first, like, ten minutes. So we're off to a light start. <laughs> so at one point Russell Crowe turns to the side profile and he looks like he's wearing a fat suit and it looks like it's really obvious. But, uh... So far, we're getting the theme of the movie, is that Russell Crowe is a crazy person. Now also, throughout the intro of the movie, we hear news reporters talking about there's an increase in violence, and there's not enough police, and more anger in the world, so there's getting like a theme here as well. So next we meet the character Rachel. She's going through a divorce. She has kids and she has trouble like being on time to places because she has to bring her kids to school. She has a brother who lives with her and her girlfriend and things aren't going the best for her. And while taking her kids to school she gets fired over the phone. She's like a hairdresser. At one point she had a salon and she's at a green light and there's a truck in front of her and she honks at him. And it turns out to be Russell Crowe. So we're thinking, okay, here is the big conflict set up here. Russell Crowe is talking about, oh, you can give like a courtesy honk or something. And she's not in a good mood, so she's kind of talking to him. The uh, son had the window down, and for whatever reason, she, he couldn't roll it up. I guess the car was malfunctioning, but what an interesting time for the window to not work. So they, Russell Crowe and Rachel exchange some words and she drives off and then all of a sudden Russell Crowe is like chasing her on the road and we don't see him again. Now later on Rachel stops at a gas station and she's inside getting like lotto tickets and a snack and we see the SUV outside in front of her car. So the cashier and a guy also standing, waiting next, notice that Rachel is looks troubled and scared, and they ask, is everything okay? And the cashier asks if they want to call the police, and the guy's like, oh, that may not do anything. Like, I can go out with you to show that you're not alone, then maybe he'll back off, and that's a nice instance of random citizens, like, willing to help out, because the guy who offers this kind of has, like, a little goatee and, like, a hood up, and you'd think for most movies like this he'd be a bad person or character, but he offers to help, which is a nice thing to see. It's a little change of pace. So when they go out to the car, Rachel drives away, and the guy says, like, good move to Russell Crowe, and Russell Crowe ends up running the guy over and still chasing after Rachel. Now, at this point, the car chase resumes, and the shots are pretty well choreographed, and there's something happens in this movie that I would never, ever see happen. A car, a car chase is momentarily paused by traffic. Because in most of these car chase movies or fast car movies like Fast and the Furious, things like that, there's always seems to be empty city streets, which is not realistic. But we finally see something realistic in terms of a car chase. So while they're at they're stopped the traffic, the tension is still up, but they're waiting for the traffic to subside, and I'm like just thinking, like, I've never seen this happen before, so props to Unhinged for doing something realistic in terms of a car chase. Now, at some point, which I don't remember, Russell Crowe somehow has Rachel's phone, and she's gonna start, like, trying to show her what a real bad day feels like, so 
he ends up meeting with Rachel's friend, who is also a divorce lawyer, and he talks about that it's her fault that bad things are going to happen now. So he ends up killing the friend, and then he goes after Rachel's brothers, and this is about halfway through the movie now, and at this point, it's kind of losing me in terms of interest, because it's kind of becoming generic crazy person movie where he's gone through a divorce himself, and he's angry at divorce lawyers, and it seems women in general. But he starts trying to kidnap Rachel's family members, and daughter, and, I mean, son. And it ends with Rachel stopping Russell Crowe, and a happy ending. I mean... Well, the brother gets killed, but they set the car the brother up to be, like, a douchebag anyway, so we don't care that he dies. Now, this movie didn't get the best reviews and stuff, but I wanted to check it out. And, like I said, the first half is interesting. It's about 90 minutes long. Russell Crowe is playing a decent, like, unhinged-type character, but then the second half kind of falls into generic plot points and character choices. So, I rented this movie on Amazon Prime. I think it was on sale, so it was like a $2, $3 maybe. To be honest, I'd wait for this to be on a streaming service for free. I wouldn't really pay money to see this. I'd, I don't know, I'd give it like a 2 out of 5 burgers because of the first half of the movie and them the plot dealing with, oh, there's traffic in real life, so car chases can't fully be at full speed, okay. But overall, it may not be that memorable, but it does have some decent camera work in terms of the car chase scenes. Alright, I'm Scott Berger, and I'll see you next time.